Just this past week, Photoshop got a host of new artificial intelligence-driven neuro filters and updates. One of the most exciting for us as portrait and wedding photographers is what's called the depth aware haze. If you know my work, you know I make use of real atmospheric haze in my images to add separation and depth, to make my subjects pop, and declutter otherwise busy backgrounds. So I was super intrigued when I heard about this new Photoshop filter that claims to analyze the image using AI, creating a depth map, and creating realistic looking haze, even if there wasn't any actually there on the day of the shoot. But you're probably wondering like I did, does this live up to the hype or is it just an unfinished gimmick? Let's find out in this video all about Photoshop's new depth aware haze filter. I love the sense of depth that atmospheric haze can add to my images, helping me separate my subjects from the background and give a really dreamy light and airy look to my images. So I'll often plan my shoot times and locations around this. But what if nature doesn't cooperate with our vision? And what if there isn't any haze on the day of your shoot, but you as a professional are expected to deliver those same dreamy images anyways? What do you do then? Well, a decent technique that I use in these situations where I'm wanting to get this look is to paint haze into my images. The problem with this though, is it's a very manual process and it doesn't take into account the idea that with real haze, objects further away are going to have the most haze and the objects closest to you, usually your subject, will have the least amount of haze. So this is why this new feature is so exciting. Not only does it have the potential to speed us up, but it also has the potential of creating a realistic haze look. Adobe is using artificial intelligence to understand our images, create a 3D depth mat, and then apply haze realistically using that information. If this works, it will be pure magic. Let's check out how to use it. So coming into the updated Photoshop 2021, I have three images I've opened up here that have different kinds of backgrounds so that we can really test this out and see how this does across different types of environments. To turn on depth aware haze, we're gonna come up to filter in the menu bar, neuro filters, and then choose the beta filters button option and come down to depth aware haze and toggle that on. This will turn on the feature. And then for this, we have two simple controls, a haze slider, which is just going to control the intensity of the haze, how much or how little, and a warm slider, which will add a color tone to the haze, either warm or cool if we drag it the opposite direction. So let's bring that back up to be a little warm. So at first glance, what I notice is this feature seems to gray everything out and crushes the whites of the image a bit. Also, if we zoom in, as we can see, it does actually a pretty nice job of isolating those foreground grasses while applying that haze to our mid-ground mountain, which is what I wanted. But what I'm not liking is how that haze effect is spilling over onto them. If we toggle this on and off, you can see that it is making her hair and his outfit a little bit gray on the edges. So the masking of it isn't the best. And unfortunately, there isn't any additional controls where we could fine tune that mask. I also wish there was a built-in way of changing the blending mode because it's doing this weird thing to my sky where it's making it gray and also adding a bit of a vignette, which I'm not liking. But the good thing is under output, we can choose to output to a new layer. So if we go ahead and press okay on this mask, what I can do here is since it's applying it on the image, it does limit us a bit, but we can take it and make it light in mode. And that's going to help keep my sky looking the same rather than my whites becoming completely gray. So if we go ahead and toggle that on and off, it does a pretty good job on the background. I would just have to come in and mask them out in order to really make this usable. So that's kind of a bummer um, because how I would use this tool is to really be able to save time because uh, a lot of times I'm doing this little bit of a lightening effect inside of Lightroom. So to really make it worth my time going from Lightroom into Photoshop and doing all this, it would really be to have it as a time saving tool, not something where I'd have to be doing the masking myself. So it does okay. I just wish that there was a little bit more controls and maybe this is something Adobe's adding in the future because it is still in beta. 
but let's hop over to the other images and see how it performs with those. So again, we'll come up to filter, neuro filters, beta filters, toggle on depth aware haze, and immediately we get the graying out of our whites, which I'm not a fan of, but we'll dial this up and see what it can do as far as adding gray into those mountains. And I do love that it has that really nice 3D effect where you can see it's getting hazier as it's getting off into the distance. So that's what I actually really love about this filter, that it's smart and that it can actually see the depth of the image. We'll add a little bit of warmth to it since we don't like that gray look, but again, this is like a really heavy handed color tone. I find that you have to keep it pretty low. I'd say under 10, five might be more than enough. In the future, I hope that they add the ability to do a custom color because I would love to be able to add a color that's selected from the image to make it look even more realistic. But I'm glad that they do have a color because real haze is not gray unless we're going for like a London fog sort of look. But we'll add our lightning effect to this and that actually looks pretty good for this image. I'd probably come on and do a bit of masking again just to make sure it's not impacting them so much. But this is actually super usable and this is a similar effect to what I would do inside Lightroom with painting those backgrounds. So in this, in this photo, I actually really love how this effect turned out and it doesn't bother me too much that the mask isn't perfect. It actually did a really good job on this one. So coming over to our last photo of these two running, we're gonna again come up to filter, neuro filters, beta filters, toggle on our depth aware haze, bring this up a bit. And this time I'm going to play around with what it would look like if we were to cool our haze a little bit. Again, I hate how it looks um, just by itself. So we'll come to our light in mode. And with this one, it's just not working. We can see here that the masking is really bad. I'm actually really surprised how bad the masks on this are for a smart tool and with how far Adobe has come um, with their auto masking advances, this just really makes it not as usable because there's this ugly halo around them. And for this photo, if I was going for a hazier look and wanted that, I would probably just hand paint it on in Lightroom because at this point it's not worth coming into Photoshop for. But for these other images, I think it actually worked pretty good. It's just gonna be really image dependent until we get better masking. So what would fix this tool and make it even more usable? Well, this is a super exciting beta development and the fact that it's guessing 3D depth data from a 2D still image is actually pretty impressive. As you can tell with my examples, it's not quite the greatest thing for portraits yet. It would do much better on landscape images without human subjects in them. The main reason for this is the masking isn't quite there, but I have a couple notes for Adobe that would actually make this tool really powerful. The first thing is to add depth controls specifically near plane clipping and far plane clipping controls so that we can tell Photoshop precisely where we want the haze to begin. So I would love for the haze to start about a foot or two behind my subjects. And this would also help with the very imperfect masking. So they wouldn't even necessarily have to fix the masking and have it be perfect, which is going to be a harder thing for them to do if they gave us these controls over where that haze started and ended. That's something I would absolutely love to see. Uh, another thing that would be really important is to have color control. So I would love to be able to select a specific color to tint that haze. And I would love for it to only affect the haze and not the entire image. These few things would make this tool insanely powerful and something that I would use a lot in my images to add that extra bit of hazy, dreamy look that I love. And where this tool is really going to shine is when our cameras gain lighter sensing, such as what's already inside the new iPhones, because this will write depth data to our images that this filter could use inside Photoshop 
rather than it just guessing from a 2D photo. So while it's not quite there yet, it's still usable on some photos and it's still in beta. So I could see this being a very powerful tool we add to our editing arsenal in the very near future. So what do you think of this new tool in Photoshop? I encourage you to play around for yourself and give it a try and see if you get better results than I do, but I myself am going to be sticking with Lightroom for now. And if you're curious about how I use Lightroom and custom brushes to create atmospheric haze in some of my images, uh, drop a comment. Maybe I'll make a video tutorial on that in the future. And also be sure to subscribe for other video tutorials as they come out. And I will see you guys in the next video.